Let's not waste any time today as I have an action-packed session for you all with a lot of big hands and big pots. We're out in Fort Worth once again at the Ford Card Room which has one of the craziest 1-3 games in the entire country. Stacks regularly reach three to five thousand dollars and today's no exception. You're going to want to stick around to the end on this one as we play an epic $3,200 pot with pocket aces. You won't believe what my opponent did in this hand. It's a must watch if you ask me and we arrive here at the card room where I find my seat and buy in for $2,000 and immediately raise up 5-7 of spades from the plus 2 position. I make it $15 to go. We're going to get action from the hijack. His name is Mark. He's a vlog watcher here from Fort Worth and we see a flop which comes ace, ace, eight. This is a board that crushes our pre-flop raising range so I bet really small here for $10. Mark wants to make the vlog, puts in the call and the dealer uses one of those funny rakes to bring in the chips. The turn comes the 10 of hearts. I decide to slow down and check here if he has a flush draw or a pocket pair above the eight. He's definitely not going anywhere and of course an ace also is not folding as well. Mark checks behind on the turn which brings in the queen of spades on the river. Seems like a good card for me to bluff on. I'm gonna have all the king jacks. I'm also gonna have hands like king, queen, and queen jack which beats his pocket nines and pocket sevens. So I decide to go for a bluff here and fire out a nearly pot sized bet. You call me with king high and win, I give you permission to leave. There's a little bit of table talk and then Mark finally calls trying to make the vlog with king six offsuit. He had to run home after this hand and look at that. He's taken down an $144 pot. I guess he made himself some gas money. This next hand we see a raise and a call ahead of me. I'm in the cutoff with 9-8 of diamonds and put in a 3 bet to $60. The initial raiser calls which brings in the third player. We are going three ways to the flop which comes queen 4-3 with one diamond. The action should check over to me on this board which it does. They both oblige and I fire out for $60 about one third the size of the pot. The initial raiser pre-flop puts in the call. We lose our three way and the turn comes the 10 of diamonds giving me the gutter to the straight and also a nine high flush draw. When the opponent checks for a second time, I now seize the opportunity to fire out big for $225. If he has a hand like jacks or nines, he definitely has to fold. All of his ace king floats also have to fold, so I really like this bet. If we get called, we're just gonna shut down on the river, which is exactly what happens. He puts in the call, alarm bells going off in my head that he has a hand like ace queen, king queen, or even queen 10 suited. On the river nine of spades, I have more reason to check behind when I have some showdown value. The villain in the low jack checks it over to me for a third time. I'm not gonna take the bait. I check behind giving up on my straight draw flush draw that turned into a river pair. And sure enough, he turns over top pair with a king kicker, taking down that $754 pot. It's a bummer he didn't have a worse queen because I think we could have gotten that to fold on the turn. I'm in the small blind with pocket sixes. We see a raise in front of us to $35. Action's on me. I could either flat the 35 or I could make it somewhere around $150. I decide to set mine here, put in the call, see if we can bring in a few other players, which uh, does not happen. We are going heads up to the flop, which comes seven, six, five, bang, we flop middle set. I start with a check. I could have a leading range on this board because I'm gonna have more of the 3-4 suited and also the 8-9 suited, whereas the hijack probably shouldn't have a lot of those combos. But that's nerdy talk here. I decided to check it over in flow, which is probably the more standard route. And the opponent from the hijack bets out for $60. Now I could have some check raises here and make it like $200 to go, or I could keep them on the hook with just a call. I decide to go for the raise, trying to get money in. He has around $1,400 in stack and I don't want any of the turn or river to check behind and uh, lose out on the maximum so I immediately go for a raise to $175. The opponent seems to have a good hand because he looks interested. He also puts in the money which is definitely the uh, better indicator there and we see a great card on the turn which comes the king of hearts. It's a great card because all of his ace king high floats on the flop. Now get there on the turn. Uh, it's a bad card in the sense that pocket kings now makes a set better than my pocket sixes, but we can't be scared about monsters in the closet. There's 429 in the middle, and I decide to fire out for 325, letting him know I'm trying to play for stacks. 
Now, if the opponent has a hand like aces, ace, king, he probably should just call here and then get me to rip my entire stack in on the river. If I had a hand like seven, eight of hearts, I might be raising the flop and then betting the turn just to jam the river on a missed heart draw. But uh, he decides to play for stacks right now. He jams in for 1156 and I snap call with my set. He turns over the bullet, so he is drawing to two outs. We have him in rough shape, and we are gonna run this board out, which comes the four of spades. Luckily, he didn't have pocket eights. That would have been gross for me, but it's gross for him in this one, a $2,700 pot being shipped over my way. And we chatted about this hand afterwards. He said against other people at the table, he might have to fold, but against my spewy image from those shorts and other vlogs I've posted, he decided to pay me off here. Nice guy, unfortunate for him, but we're taking down that massive one. It seems like we have the poker gods on our side for this session. I raise up pocket eights from late position. I get one caller and we flop ourselves a set on a nine, eight, four board. Bang, we flop metal set again. I bet out for $25 and the opponent folds. So desired outcome on the flop, not getting more money in, but then we look down at pocket sixes once again, get pocket sixes, pocket eights. I go back down to sixes and I raise it up to $30 over a $6 button straddle from our buddy, Andrew. He decides to put in the call and play heads up in position against me on a queen nine three board. I decide to bet one third the size of the pot and Andrew puts in the call. $100 pot brewing, the turn comes the king of spades. Should be much better for me than Andrew when he doesn't decide to three bot me preflop. So I fire out for $69, not gonna miss the opportunity. If he puts in the call here, alarm bells are gonna be ringing. And sure enough, he does call. So he could have some straight draws. He could have a flush draw. Of course, he could have queen nine, king nine, all of those weirdo hands that he has from the button. In some spots, I might give up on this eight of diamonds river, but I didn't come to the fort to give up this time. I fire out for $175, putting him to the test. He immediately decides to raise me to 375, so the story is up here. Pocket sixes. Tried to bluff Andrew off the hand, but uh, he outplayed me in this one. I fold my cards. He's gonna show us ace jack offsuit with a jack of hearts. I guess he blocks jack 10 there and went for the bluff. Everyone's trying to make the vlog tonight and outplay me, and it looks like early on in this session, minus that one massive hand with the set, they are getting the best of me tonight. Nice hand, Andrew. Nice hand. All right, let's get back to our bread and butter flopping sets. I look down at pocket fives from the low jack. I raise it up to $20 and we get two calls. The flop comes a five on it. Bang, we flop a set again. But just like the last one, I fire out for $30 as a C-bet and they both fold. So we are doing step A, which is flop the sets. For the yeah. next session, we gotta work on getting value once we make a big hand. Five, three, deuce board, flopping top set. Next hand, we find ourselves on the button. There's a raise to 15 and three callers over to me. Seems like a great spot to go for the squeeze. I fire it up to $100, not before we get four bet by Nate Dog to $300. Fun player here at the fort. He's definitely gonna mix it up. He's not only gonna have aces and kings and ace king. So I decide to rip my entire stack in as a five bet semi bluff here. Sure, I could make some two pairs and some backdoor straights and flushes. But when I jam it all in, we get snapped off by Nate Dog, which is not good news. This almost assuredly means he has us in rough shape. Sure enough, he lets us know he has the goods this time. We are gonna run this board out twice. The first board comes favorable for Nate Dog, and the second board is a little bit more of the same, although we pick up a sweat on the turn with a diamond draw, only to brick on the river. Nice hand, sir. Taking down a $21.49 pot, just like that. Our uh, profits are all being shipped over to Nate Dog across the table. We're now stuck 250 on the session. There's a raise and a call ahead of me. I looked down at Jack 10 of hearts. Of course, they're gonna be three betting here. I just lost a massive one and we have a suited hand to make a royal flush. I make it $80 to go. Are we gonna pick up any customers? Yes, Andrew decides to jam all in for $597. That casual raise jam here. Does he have me crushed? I mean, we're gonna find out. Jack 10 of hearts, way too good for me to fold. I put in the call and just like that, we are playing a 400 big blind pot here at 1-3. The Fort Cash games are crazy and look at that, Andrew has my favorite hand, pocket sevens. Of course he's playing that to make the vlog and uh, why wouldn't the flop reward him? He holds, the turn comes the eight of spades followed by the ace on the river and uh, we're gonna run it two times, I forgot to mention that and he flops a set on the second one. I flop a pair, turn ourselves dead 
Just like that, we are losing yet another one. Look at Andrew's face. He's beating old Wolfgang with pocket sevens on two boards. Can't win a flip. Can't get ace five of diamonds through as a bluff. Our knight is making a turn for the worse. All right, ace queen offsuit. I raise it up to $30 from under the gun. Snoopy, who decided to drive all the way from Dallas out to these crazy games in Fort Worth, puts in the call and my right does as well. We're going three ways to the flop in position, which comes ace queen six. Bang, we flop top two. In between two opponents, I usually start with a check. That's no different here. Oscar checks to me. I check it over to Snoopy and the turn comes the jack of hearts. Not exactly the best card because they're more likely to have king 10 than myself. However, if they did make two pair with an ace jack or queen jack, we're now probably gonna be playing for stacks. Oscar fires out for $50. I could immediately raise here. I could just call. I decide we are playing for more money. I make it $150 to go. And Oscar doesn't think about it too long before putting in the call. On the six of Diamonds River, it's a pretty big brick. It does pair the board and uh, Oscar checks it over to me for a third time. Gonna go large here, trying to get maximum value versus those other two pairs. I very dramatically fire out 425 using all four fingers on my left hand. Choo -choo. And he snap calls me and turns over his cards before I can. And somehow he has me beat in this pot with pocket queens? What? He rivers the boat there, doesn't go for an additional value, assuming I could have pocket aces. But look at that, right when we thought we were getting our money back from the last few hands, Oscar puts a dent in that one and is taking down another 400 big blind pot, ace queen offsuit flopping top two, only to find the case queen because Oscar had queens. To make it worse, Oscar has turned into the next poker vlogger, takes a few pictures and videos. That's gonna conclude this session at the fort, but hold on everyone, the best is still yet to come. I wasn't satisfied with losing 1425 this time around, so I went back to the fort the very next week to get some more hands in, and boy did it not disappoint. But before we jump into those, I have a very special announcement. Ever since I first came to Texas, the fort has been one of my favorite card rooms from the word go. The atmosphere, food, poker, and awesome players have kept me coming back again and again. I love it so much, I decided to invest in the room. Yes, your boy Wolfgang is now a part owner of the fort card room out here in Alito, Texas. Definitely a huge bucket list thing checked off, purchasing a card room, and you better believe I have a ton of cool ideas that involve you guys, the subscribers. I already lowered the age from 21 to 19, so if you go to TCU or SMU, now's your chance to come on out. If you live in the area or want to make a trip out for some of the best poker in the country, comment down below or shoot me a DM on Instagram if you're planning on stopping by. I really appreciate all the support this past year. I definitely would not be in this position without you all, and I plan on giving back. Now let's jump into the hands here on session number two. This hand is a wild one, the $10 button straddles on. There's three callers over to me and I make it $55 to go. That's gonna thin the field all the way down to one player, the player on the button, Andrew Wong, a fun player here at the fort. Going heads up, out of position, which comes king, nine, deuce, bang, we flop top set. $143 in the middle and I decide to fire out for $25. A really small bet here, I don't wanna lose him. I almost debated checking, but I thought betting here allows him to raise and put more money in with his nines and deuces. He pretty quickly calls and the turn comes the five of hearts. With the dynamic of the board changing, he'll now have some open-ended straight draws like three, four. He'll have some heart draws like ace, four of hearts and ace, three of hearts. So I wanna go large here and I nearly fire out for pot for $150. Andrew doesn't think about it too long before putting in the call once again. And on the nine of clubs river, I now have an interesting spot. Betting here makes a lot of sense because I obviously wanna get value when I have top boat. However, if I check it over to him, he's not gonna check behind with many of his kings. Any of his nines are gonna bet. And checking also allows him to bet with a lot of his missed flush draws as well as his missed straight draws. So I decided to get tricky here, check it over to him, which I think is the right play and he snap checks behind and soul reads me because he had king queen offsuit. Check that. Definitely would have called a bet on the river, but somehow, some way, when I check it over to him, he doesn't go for value. This $493 pot is definitely much needed after that last session, but Andrew Wong definitely owned us on the river here. Nice hand, Andrew. All right, let's battle with Andrew once again. I look down at a better hand, surprisingly. Pocket aces from under the gun. I make it $20 to go. Andrew's in the big blind this time and three bets me to $125. 
I think calling in position makes some sense, but we're pretty deep and it's hard to get stacks in by just calling. So I decided to four bet him, which is definitely a strong play, but I'm gonna have some bluffs as you saw against Nate Dog in an earlier hand, Ace Five of Diamonds. That sets up nicely here for a four bet to $300 and Andrew pretty quickly calls. Gonna go heads up in position to a flop, which comes 973 with two spades. Unfortunately, I do not have the ace of spades in my hand, but when Andrew decides to lead out into me, he definitely is screaming pocket pair underneath mine like jacks, queens, or kings. It's a $500 bet. I am going absolutely nowhere. I also don't think raising makes much sense because if he has pocket nines or pocket sevens, we're screwed anyways and the money's gonna get in. And against queens, jacks, and tens, we don't wanna give him any reason to fold. So I decided to just call just like that. We're playing a $1,600 pot and the turn comes, the ace of club, bang, we turn top set. It's a dream card for us because now we're beating pocket nines and pocket sevens. A little bit more likely though, we are putting queens, jacks, and tens in a rough spot with this ace of clubs on the turn. Might have been a little bit of overkill. He's still gonna have some flush draws as well from the big blind, and now he slows down and checks. It seems to me that he does in fact have a hand like queens, jacks, or tens, or a flush draw, so I'm not gonna scare him off. I decided to check behind after making my top set, and the river comes the king of clubs. Kind of a double-edged sword because he might catch up with pocket kings that decided to not bet the turn, but also those queens and jacks are now in even rough shape because they are relegated to third pair. Andrew is not putting more money in the middle, it seems. He checks it over to me. If I did have any bluffs like 10 jack of spades or queen jack of spades, I might have played him this way, calling the flop, checking behind on the turn, and then bluffing on the river. Although I'm gonna have a lot more value hands in the spot, I decide to jam my entire stack in for $800. And sure enough, Andrew realizes this, and he verbalizes out loud that he doesn't beat much. Not exactly what you want to hear when you're holding the nuts on the board. You want the opponent to have a two pair or set type of hand and put in the money. But lucky for us, even though Andrew does not beat very much, he decides he's getting too good of pot odds here and puts in the call. It's $800 to win 3,200. And yeah, we turn over the goods immediately. He tells us later he had pocket jacks. Just not believing me, thinking I could have some busted straight draws and flush draws on that flop. Unlucky for him though, we are taking down a massive pot here, around 1,100 big blinds. Come out to the fort, you guys. I promise you it's a good time. Playing 1,100 big blind pots with pocket aces is pretty insane to say, but uh, yeah, we are taking that one down. And this is definitely much needed on our road to recovery after the first hand of the session. Our chip stack gets a much needed upgrade and then we look down at king queen of clubs now from the low jack. There's a raise to 15 and I three bet it to $50. Who's the opponent? None less than Andrew, our nemesis here in this vlog. He decides to call my three bet out of position and off to a flop we go, which comes ace five five rainbow. Andrew check calls a bet on the flop of $35 and the turn comes the four of hearts. I'm gonna have ace king and ace queen. Andrew really shouldn't have that. His nutted hands revolve around the five. So when he checks it over to me, I decide to go for a nearly pot sized bet, trying to get all of his pocket nines and pocket sevens and all that good stuff to fold. Hands that have me beat, I can get a lot of those to fold, but not in this spot when he check jams on me for $420. The story's up here, I can't continue with my king queen high. Of course, if the turn was the four of clubs, would be putting more money in, but that's ending this one. A little bit of a rebate there for Andrew. And that's gonna wrap up session number two. Shout out to Andrew for providing some crazy action-packed hands here in that wild session of 1-3 Texas Hold'em. This one went a little bit better than the last one as we walked away with a $675 profit in just six hours of play. Combine that with the first session when we find ourselves down $750 total. But don't worry, we're gonna have a chance to get that all back and more in the very next video. We go back to the fort once again and play a session that easily tops the two I play today as it's one for the ages. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you think of my card room acquisition. And I'll see you guys as always in the next video. Peace.